thank you. Thank you, Maria Louise and everyone uh, uh, for this invitation. I'm, I'm really glad to be here. Um, this is part of, I'll be talking about what has been my PhD project. Uh, can we um, uh, look into what are the material legacies, so fascist legacies in Italy. And uh, so I'll try to, in coordination with Hans, we thought that um, being Bolzano is such, a, such an iconic case in terms of renegotiation and resignification of the of the um, of this site that I'll try and give a broader context of what are the other sites in Italy. And to some extent, my message would, would like to be that if Bolzano is such a successful example of what how to deal with legacies of the dictatorship, um, it's not has not happened everywhere in Italy, so that maybe Bolzano is more of an exception than the norm. Um, Italy, and this is happening because Italy um, hasn't really dealt with the fascist past. Um, there's no, it is also a historiographic problem. Um, there's no shared narrative or shared public memory on how to deal with, with, the, with the dictatorial past. So it has been said that Italy has some sort of divided memory um, in terms of so meaning that there's still some somehow some a portion of the population that doesn't see the dictatorship as bad as it was. And so this is created social tension. Um, there are two, I think, two quite iconic case studies that, that, that have reached some sort of debate, uh, more interesting enough, more internationally than nationally in Italy. Um, and they are Mussolini's obelisk on the left, as you can see, and then there's the palace of Italian civilization on the right. Um, these two have reached um, some, the international debate and to some extent the national one, because interestingly, interesting enough, uh, there has been an article of Ruth Bengiat on uh, why as our precious buildings still standing in Italy. Um, this article um, hasn't been really appreciated uh, in Italy much, uh, because it maybe also because of the translation of the title, and of course the title wasn't uh, chosen by the scholar, um, but um, so there was this perception of where they stand. So should we? It was perceived that this should have been knocked, knocked down, but obviously this, is, this was not the message from this article. But still, um, so this Kata hydrogen journal in Italy is a very sensible topic, um, and and then it just emerged how people are still very attached to these buildings, and they don't really see uh, any negative meaning attached to it. Um, although at some point the, 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 the president of the lower chamber of parliament, Laura Bodrini, somehow addressed the fact that um, there's still, I mean, the symbol still in his name on it, this could be offensive for, for some, but, uh, but again, um, there was unanimous reaction that um, the, the, this is not really a, a, real, a real issue, that this, is, this, this building belongs to the past, and so we, should, we shouldn't really be worried about this, these things today. Uh, on the right, the Palace of Italian Civilization is another interesting case because it is, has been restored recently and it's now today the, the headquarters of the, the fashion Maison Fendi. Uh, so the, the, there has been a, a deal on the rest for the restoration and then the use of the building. And, and this, this more than the building itself has sparked the debate because it, it is alienation of a public building. Uh, and then an iconic fascist building. So, but uh, um, as for as for the obelisk, when when they were when the CEO of Fendi was asked, so what uh, don't you think that I need to be careful when using fascist symbols? He just replied again um, in line with uh, with the other comments that they managed to use. They just said, well, it's just history. So the, 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 the it's not it's not a big deal. The Bolzano case used to be the, the fascist headquarters, and, and it has this bus relief that was the, the longest bus relief with Mussolini's horse riding still, still standing in Italy. So the, the issue with the town hall was what to do with this and the, with this present. And, and the, 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 the solution was, was a public consultation. Um, and, um, and, and, and the final, the, the selected project was uh, the one from Arnold Hotzneck and Michele Bernardi with this installation that is um, re rephrasing an art, um, but into no one has the right to obey. So just covering Mussolini's horse riding and then giving 
this this new layer, this contemporary layer of what we of what the town hall really wanted this building to say. Uh, but then, this, this is just a very good example of what to do because it was public consultation, so it was bottom up, not top down uh, approach, um, and also it's not uh, it's, there's no distraction, it's not invasive, it's removable. Um, but then on, on the right side, you can see this picture. This is this is a memorial um, that has been built in, them, in the memory of Rodolfo Graziani, who was a conv convicted war criminal. And this is his hometown of Chile. Uh, so the, 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 the mayor decided to, to spend public money in having a memorial for, 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 for one of the worst uh, character of, of, of the Italian occupation. Of, and he has been convicted for crimes also almost genocide for um, Libya and the compass of Libya in Ethiopia. So um, this is just to give a sense that to some extent um, that there are still these divided memory, memories, I mean, are still emerging today and depending on who, is, who has access to, to public money. So in this case, the mayor was a far right mayor and uh, it, the good thing in a way is that he has been, has been, has been convicted for this, but um, um, so, so the, the real issue with, with these legacies is, is, is also this, uh, the fact that the far right are very often claiming this site as their heritage site. Um, so what happened in the, in the post-war um, with this, uh, with fascist media legacies has been that symbols have been targeted. So in the, in the wake of Mussolini's fall and in the immediate post-war, uh, mostly symbols were removed. So, so, so in the Italian case to say is that the fascists were removed and they were um, physically uh, taken out the axis as, in, as also possibly has been, has been argued that possibly was the easiest things to do rather than uh, destroying entire buildings. Also because in the practicality of, of a post-war nation, uh, most of these buildings were, were reused. So they were actually put they were put in for, for good use. For instance, they were hosting, they were, they were given, um, they were used as, as house and accommodations for displaced people that were, in the case where the house were bombed some from other areas uh, up and down the country. Um, and then Mussolini's, mostly, it was mostly Mussolini's iconography that was targeted. Um, so it, it's very often the case that um, his, his um, uh, his face was either in, in, when it was in frescoes, it was either defaced or vandalized, and um, or in, with huge frescoes, very often they were just um, they were just um, covered either with curtains or with plaster. Um, and then there's the eagles, which is another first symbol. But uh, in as 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 in the, the the Italian landscape, eagles could have been probably. Um, confused with Roman eagles and then Roman archaeology. I mean, many of them are still in place. But as a, as as a, as I said before, it's now the, the situation is different. I mean, from the eighties and nineties onward, there has been a wave of historical revisionism in terms of the perception of fascists. And, and so, for instance. Uh, it is very often the case now that some of these symbols, or some in these cases Mussolini's head, have been re restored, and they are coming back into public space. Uh, so this is this is a case of Mussolini's head, which um, used to be put in, in the in the basement of one of the, of the buildings in the EUR neighborhood, the area project where I show you before the slide was the warfare exhibition neighborhood. Um, uh, the project has been uh, has been completed in the post-war, and uh, but most of the iconography of Mussolini was just removed from from the site. But until not until 2013 that this had it was it's has come back. There's the and on the right, as you can see from the photo, there's, there's two heads. One was Mussolini's head, and then the other one was the one from the from the um, from the king. Um, and when they were asked, why are you, are you taking this, this head back? The, the reply was, well, we, we, we had to restore them. They, 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 they don't represent an issue anymore. And I'll show you where they were. So their reply was, this, is, this was the original room. This was the original setting of those two heads. So the reply was, okay, but we haven't put them back where they were in this grand room. We just put them in the press office room. 
But then one could argue, okay, but the, why, why you felt the need to, to take this head back? So to give a sense that the perception that there is for fascist heritage is not something that needs to be discussed. Uh, the one on the right is um, uh, what is left of, uh, of, of the Basuli for Mussolini's horse riding, and it's in, in Rome in the Palazzo Fischi now. And, and the, the interesting comparison with Bolzano is that uh, in this case, no one really um, wondered what to do with, with, with this bus relief. And actually, the managers uh, of the building have told me that uh, as, a, as a form of counter memory, actually, uh, Mussolini's face is still often vandalized and they keep restoring it. So it's a completely, as you can see, it's a completely different approach with Bolzano. And on the, the picture from the picture on the left, what you can see is uh, it's a very creative way of not destroying fascist heritage. So this, this was the genius of fascism, um, as this, this building was the main entrance to, to the World Fair exhibition, it was the ticket office. Um, so this was the genius of fascism giving the, the fascist or Nazi salute, as, as you want to call it. And um, in the post-war, rather than destroying the, the sculpture, they decided to uh, to transform it, to just rename it uh, as the genius of the sport. So again, this is just another way of how Italy is, is dealing or not with, with, with the past. Um, this is, uh, again, another horse riding example of Mussolini, uh, which happened to be, uh, used to be actually in Bologna in front of the, of the stadium. Um, so this, uh, because this area was uh, a site of uh, very um, strongly um, uh, in depth to the to the to the resistance, there were many fights with, with the last part of the liberation of Italy from between the resistance and uh, and the Nazi fascists. Um, in this 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 actually this sculpture was fused, is in bronze, was fused, and so, so three it was made three uh, sculptures of partisans were made out of it, with the exception of Mussolini's head, because uh, again, as I said, there's still a very strong presence of neo-fascist sympathizers in Italy. So to somehow the head was stolen from, from this fusion of the, of this, of this culture. And then it's, it's been kept by neo-fascist sympathizers. And it's from this photo, which is a not a good one, I'm sorry, it was used to be in one of the offices of, of a neo-fascist party in, in the Tuscany area. But at the moment, is we, we don't know where, where, where it's located. So it has disappeared. Um, another example from Rome is where Mussolini used to live. Uh, this is Villa Torlonia, um, which is an 18th century villa, uh, which is an exact replica of an ancient Roman villa, as for Mussolini somehow to still be seen as, as, an, as a Roman emperor. Um, and uh, the property has been restored in, in recent years. Uh, into, uh, to be precise, in 2016. And, um, and what is very fascinating for, for this topic is, is how the display of the, of the villa. I think it's rather disturbing because it's just talking about Mussolini as any other um, historical figures that just passed by in this villa. But having been Italy, a country that, that has no proper display or doesn't have a museum that really talks about um, fascism as a historical period, it, this was a missed opportunity to, to really talk about a little bit about the dictatorship as well and what, is the, what was the historical role of Mussolini really in Italy. Whereas it's, it's really, really um, described in a very soft way. So for instance, uh, Mussolini is not, it's not called a dictator, it's just called the prime minister. So it, it was really, really disturbing. And also the way they could, the, the, also visually, um, the two, the, these two panels are the one that talks about the Tolonia family and the one that talks about the Mussolini family. We all the picture of Mussolini's kids and Mussolini's parties, Mussolini's wedding and things. It's, it's, it is not the way to, to, to really talk about difficult heritage. And again, I mean, you walk around the villa, you see Mussolini's, Mussolini's bedroom, Mussolini's wife's bedroom. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's all not properly uh, put in critical context. Then there's another section of the property that is Mussolini's bunkers, uh, and and this is and this is also raised questions because this is also a, another man, heritage managing, management issue. Um, so in this case, this 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 portion of the property has been outsourced 
the, the, manage, the management. So there's, there's a private owner with private tool guides and there are no historians. So in this case as well, the message that they're giving when, when, you, when you do the visit um, is, for instance, being these bunkers is that they also talk a little bit about the, um, the, the, the history of the fact that Mussolini was building shelters for the population during World War II, but actually this is not the real message that you should arrive because Mussolini didn't really build any of them. I mean, and actually most of the casualties that happened during World War II and during the bombing of Rome was precisely because people didn't know where to, where to hide. So, so Mussolini was really not, not working in that direction. And then other sites that really uh, raise attention for heritage scholars and manager, professional manager, heritage managers is, uh, is it's a very challenging place, which is Mussolini's hometown, which has been defined very, very often as a dark ages site. Uh, because uh, so as it, this, is, this is the place that where Mussolini was born and, and ev ev since the beginning of the dictatorship was a place that Mussolini himself wanted to be a sacred place um, and, and a place for pilgrimage. So the, the, Mussolini decided that every Italian should, have, should, should go and see a pay a visit to, 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 to his um, birth, 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 birth house at least once a year. So some sort of has been defined as some sort of Bethlehem of the regime. So this some, some sort of sacred religious pilgrimage. And actually far right pilgrimage has been going on ever since the post-war until present day. And, uh, and this is because also now Mussolini's mausoleum is there, so his body is there. Um, and so the, the real challenge here is, is what also do with this sort of heritage. And, uh, and uh, on the left, uh, you can see is a picture of the, of the fascist headquarters in Bolzano, in, sorry, in Predatio. Uh, so again, if you compare with the Bolzano case, it's really interesting. Uh, this, is the, this is the biggest that Italy has because it was supposed to uh, host all the pilgrims coming to Predapio once, at least once a year. Now uh, all the gatherings are happening three times a year when Mussolini was born, when Mussolini was killed, and then when the, to celebrate the March of Rome. So this is Mussolini, uh, Mussolini's mausoleum, and there's, uh, again, many, many questions about whether to do, whether to shut it down, but actually it's private property, it belongs to the family, so you can't really uh, close it down. Um, and this is a, is a sample of, of the area of what could happen when, when again, you just leave heritage sites uncontrolled and, and they, can, can be the property, they can be buy by private owners. So in this case, this is one of, of the Mussolini family property that has been bought by a private owner, and he really literally created a far-right shrine. So on the right, you can see Mussolini's bed with Mussolini's uniform, and it's not even known whether this is true or not, whether it's an original one, but you know, it's, it's all part of, of also ma making this dark, dark tourist going on because of the mausoleum of Mussolini. So on the left, this is Mussolini's study, and on the right, you also can see some very disturbing pictures and the frescoes and art created in this place in memory of, of Mussolini. Um, and also what is also happening, of course, is that the memory is always uh, is ever creating the aspect of, 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 of reaction and counter reaction. So there's, there's also the, the marketing aspect of the villas is often being vandalized by locals that are not happy to have uh, these sort of sites near their home, but it, this place is also famous also internationally for all the shops that you can find it as souvenirs shops that are selling all, all sort of fascist paraphernalia. And here you can see also sort of the most um, uh, soft one. I mean, they also have arms and things. Um, and to just conclude, um, so in the, in the what you've seen, the, the fascist headquarters, uh, there has been a proposal to, to have there the museum, a museum of the history of fascism, a project that has been heavily contested um, because some scholars thought, okay, this is the right place to have uh, um, a museum explaining the atrocities of fascism, what really was, but then other scholars debated the fact that, well, having Mussolini, Mussolini or Mussolini's body, uh, also because in the cult of Mussolini, I mean, his body has a very, had a very, very powerful aspect for neo-fascists, um, whether it, it can never be dissociated from Mussolini, never have a, a very uh, positive um, interpretation 
I mean, a, a true, truly critical interpretation of fashion. So at the moment, the museum, the museum project has been put on hold indefinitely, and but the restoration is still going on. So we'll, we'll probably hear about this again. I think that no one really wants to to to, to take on this huge uh, issue of having to to create an. Uh, 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 a shared narrative about the regime. So, and, the, and then I, I, I observed uh, as a very fascinating case study, this idea of the museum in Predapio, uh, which was eventually a very difficult site in itself, but the, the project for the museum uh, was very interesting. And, and, and the problem, the problem, uh, the historiographic problem was exactly what would you tell? Because then, and I, I've worked in museum myself. So when, when you create an exhibition or, or a permanent exhibition, then obviously you, you have to make a selection of what you're trying to say uh, inevitably, uh, and then on what you put on display. And then there was the issue, okay, should we have object? But then you, you, you can't really have a fascist object on display.